Well, hello. This is a quick 10-minute um, tutorial. Uh, Great Cow Basic um, MCP um, 7940 uh, real-time clock. Uh, real-time. This real-time clock is um, handles minutes, hours, minutes, seconds, days of the week, days, months, and years, and uh, leap year compensations up to 2014 from memory. And there's uh, similar modes to the DS1307 in terms of. Um, 12 hour and 14 hour modes. It uses a standard clock crystal and um, has 64 bytes of um, configurable um, usable SRAM, which is quite useful, as an automatic switchover from a battery. Um, but, the, but the key thing is, is that it's a plug-in replacement for the um, it's a plug-in replacement for the DS1307 in terms of um, uh, form and fit. Um, what else have I missed there? Um, um, I2 squared interface. Um, similarly, the command set for Great Cam Basic is very similar to the DS1307 in terms of what's on the left here. Um, we can. I'll start with the, the, the this set in the middle, which is um, setting the clock, setting time, set date, set the hour mode, mode, and then you've got this um, um, configurable square wave output, and then you've got um, a couple of others which are around um, how you set up the um, multifunctional port. Or the multifunctional pin, sorry, and, and some control values. You have to read the data sheet for that, but it's all well documented. Um, then you've got some around the, the actual chip management itself. You've got to enable the um, oscillator. It's very important you do that, and, and that you enable backup uh, battery backup. You, it's, um, you don't have to have the battery um, support that. You can actually uh, have a test to see if the battery has actually failed, and when that occurred by reading the clock failure date. And you must clear that down into when it's occurred so that you are ready for the next power failure. The clock still runs, but at least you detect when that power failure happened and you can reset the clock. Read values are in the next um, next um, set of uh, controls and then read and write into the 64-bit uh, 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 SRAM is um, the, using the right read and write commands. Then in the in this um, right hand um, column, I put all the alarm stuff. So you've got two alarms, zero and one, and there are a couple of uh, parameters that you can use for there. You set the alarm in terms of uh, time, and time will obviously be hours, minutes, seconds, days of the week, days, months, and years. And then you have a mask, and, you, and that mask tells you exactly when it will event. So it might event on a minute, it might uh, seconds, hours, days, etc. Um, then you need to set what's called the polarity, and the polarity is of the multifunctional port, so the higher it's low when the event occurs, and then you must enable or disable the alarm. You can read that alarm to um, to uh, get the date, uh, all, all the parameters out of it to ensure it's uh, uh, correct, so you can set it. You set alarm and read alarm, uh, One is you know, they go hand in hand, and when you have an alarm, you must clear it, but you can always get the alarm status as a boolean back as alarm one, as an alarm status. And then finally, you get a, a, a failure uh, of a clock as well, and you can clear that down. These are all pretty well documented in the um, data sheet, but um, we can have a look at the code. So what I've got is a um, uh, circuit here, and essentially it's exactly the same circuit as the DS1307. And these pull up on the uh, I square C data lines, and you need to pull up on the um, output and watch crystals and, and you can see there's a battery attached to VBAT and ground. So what I'm going to be showing is a microprocessor with a LCD and a, and the clock a MCP7940 and I have two switches. Those two, those two switches, one is for setting the uh, time and one is for set, changing the mode and mode is for the um, 12 or 24 hour and uh, setting up the incrementing through the dates when you're using the set mode. But for today, I'm going to be using an LCD emulator uh, so that we can get it on the screen. As you can see now, it's um, chipping away and the time isn't quite correct to my computer. That's because I have um, uh, been playing around with this. Uh, so, but I can just uh, quickly set that time up. So I'm just pressing the set button. And it takes me through the parameters. And if I want to set it to 13, I just press that. 13 and then just set it and now it's set correctly. If you can ignore the little display there, we'll come back to that in a moment. So that's the time of date where we're at now. So what does it look like in the code? Well, the code's pretty simple. You need to include the uh, command, the mcp 17940 nh file. And we need to decide whether it's hardware 
or whether it's software. The driver supports either. You just select whether you've got an SSP module. If you have, then you can use hardware. Hardware can run at 400 um, megahertz or 100 megahertz. The software on at this particular chip at 32 megahertz runs at approximately, um, I think, 133. It's quite fast. Now, let's have a look at the commands. This is the commands, a quick reference guide in here, so you can see all the same commands I just showed you in the PowerPoint slide. Um, and they're pretty well simple in terms of read and write, dates and times, etc. So, if we look at an example, this is a set clock. This will set the clock to uh, 1400 hours, 52 minutes, 0 seconds on the first day of the week. On the 25th day of January, 2014 that will set the clock and we can um, detect whether it's running hardware or software by actually cutting the power and I'll just show you what it does so here we go I'll just uh, cut the power once it's up there I've just cut the power to it I'm using the pick kit for power so that I can just do this it's currently run in hot hardware so what it does I can change that to software all I have to do is come in here and uncomment out un sorry uncomment out uncomment the software, comment in the hardware, recompile. That will then um, load that into the pick kit, which will automatically pick it up. And if we look at the, uh, leave the clock running in the background. I've just reset the clock on that for those who have just spotted that by hitting that reset because that time was been set every time I. There we go. And now, if I stop that, we can see it's, it's transferred over to software. And how do I know it's doing that? That's, cause that's, how, that's in the code just down here. To say, if this parameter is set, uh, sorry, if, that, if, if this define is set, then it, it just shows us it's in hardware. If this is set, it's in software. So we now know it's in software. Oh, I've just set the clock in correctly. That's why it's done it. 18, 16 on the same day. I'll quickly program that up. That program will fail because I've actually got um, F my F5 compile key set up to uh, use um, a bootloader. It will still load up, but it will, I'll just get a quick error on the screen here. Takes about 30 seconds to compile because I'm actually doing quite a lot on this machine at the moment. Just uh, get rid of that. That's loading up. I'll get rid of that. And the time should be about right. There we go. Perfect. So we've just set the time, and that's how you set the time using this command here. Let's get rid of that so it doesn't do it again. Uh, main loop of this program is very similar to um, DS13. It's got a, a an update. The display, if the buttons are pressed, then and, uh, change the settings or change the mode. And then I've got what's called the alarm handling code. And I'm going to show you how we do alarm handling. And then we'll show you how we program it. So essentially, we, we have a Boolean test here for alarm zero. If it's set to one, then there's been an alarm, and it's going to print that uh, um, on the first line, line zero, and put a zero there, and it's going to clear the alarm down. So it's actually just going to track that t second, and I'll do that because um, I want to leave the little star zero up for five seconds. I'll show that in a moment. And the same for alarm one. So alarm one, it's a boolean test. If it's equal to one, then I'm going to put it on line one with a little star and a one. Clear the alarm down and then track it. So if we look at the clock, we'll see that on a, a particular moment, it will um, put that little star up. And there we go, it's star one. It comes up at 15 seconds and it stays up for five seconds. That's because the next piece of code beneath there holds it up for five seconds and then clears down a uh, tracking uh, variable called alarm track zero. At the 45th second, because I've told it to do that, I'll show you how in a moment, it will raise and I'll put an alert on the screen. And there we go, we can see it on the screen there. So what we're going to try and do is just look at um, an oscilloscope for a moment. I've got my Gavtronics oscilloscope set up here. Um, I've got it in uh, oscilloscope mode. Let me just uh, start that. Um, 
I have no trace running, which is uh, very strange. I'll auto that. There we go. That's my second trace. I'm going to put that down to about a second. I've got it way too much gain here. If I look at my clock, I should get a uh, an output on that about 45 seconds because that's um, connected to the output pin. Let's see what it does in a second. And there we go. So that um, equates to the uh, alert. So we now know we've got a uh, a one second a one second um, peak on that every time that fires off, and you can use that for an external alert into another microcomputer. Uh, once that fires off, I'm just going to hold it, and we're going to look at the voltage on that. Five more. Seconds. There we go. Um, so that is channel one. That's that's just come out at uh, one point two volts. So I thought it's quite higher than that, but uh, it's working. It's doing what it's meant to do. So um, it every and so every uh, thirty seconds it's firing off that pin. So how's it doing that? Let me show you. Up here, I've got the settings. So how's your set an alarm? Is you need to turn the square wave off to start the, the uh, this multifunctional port because we need to use that as our alarm port and that's what I'm monitoring. You need to set the polarity. The polarity can be high or it can be low. Therefore, we set it to on or off. And then we set the alarm. We set the alarm, and this is for the actual alarm. This this alarm zero and alarm one to 11:45, 45, 45 seconds. On the first day of the month and with the day of the a day of the month, and it would then set an alarm off. But we have this other parameter which is called assertion and the assertion is is, is um, a list of when the alarm will be fired off okay so it can either either be uh, by the second or by the minute by the minute by the hour etc so if we look in the if we actually look in the um, oops a daisy I'll have to wipe that out if we look in here for the assertions I'll move the assertions across. So the assertions can be seconds, minutes, hours, days of the week, date, or all of them. So if you want an explicit time, you'd set it to an explicit time in the future, and then the alarm would fire off. So that's quite important, those assertions. And um, I'll put those assertions in here so that uh, I've got them sort of documented in one place. And then I'll just... Uh, comment that lot out by putting the hash in front of it. There we go. Alright, and uh, so what we've got down here is an assertion of every sec of a second. So se assertion seconds means that every 45 seconds, on the 45th second, it's going to assert and set that mask. Okay, now what's important about that is that we need to clear the alarm down and then enable the alarm. That's the process. You must set the polarity if you want to go higher low, if, as it is if you want to. Set the alarm, set the mask, and clear and enable. So let's look at alarm one. We set the alarm priority on, so it's on, up. Set the alarm, and this one's at um, alarm one, 11.45. So this is on the 45th, 11 minute, sorry, hour, minute, second. This is the 15th second. Assertion is every se every event, every time there's a 15 second, and then enable, uh, clear and enable. That's how it's firing off every 15 seconds and every 45 seconds because in here. So if I percent, if I change that to 50, and in here I'll, sorry, if I change that to 20, which is the 20th second, I change this to 50, and recompile, we'll see that because the assertion is on seconds, it will then fire off at the 50th and at the 20th second. So currently it's just fired off at the 45th second. And then uh, my code just remo removes that code, a uh, little star zero from the display manually. So it's just a uh, Compiled, just loading it in. That's good, we should see. 
So we come on at uh, so you should fire at uh, 20 seconds for alarm 1. Which it does. And it will do the same for 50. Okay, and that's really um, what we've seen. Um, so we've got two alarms in the chip. We can raise a multifunctional pin or or, or we can actually um, raise it and track it by the um, an alert inside of the chip itself. Uh, other things that you can do in here in terms of the... Um, multifunctional pin um, you can actually write if you look at the if you look at the data sheet um, you can actually uh, set any of these parameters in terms of uh, the square wave output that can be to one kilohertz right the way through to uh, one, one, one hertz sorry to uh, 32.786 kilohertz and uh, you can in inside of that register inside of the control register you can set various parameters but if you use the um if you use the um the code then all that's handled for you and then and you can also read as i said before you can read right to the general purpose ram using the um simple commands of uh, read and write okay so write to an address read an address and you've got 64 bits and those are unchecked i'll just check that code for you so what i mean by that is you say you can overwrite any of the internal um, SRAM and you should really use 20 hex to 5, uh, 5F hex only otherwise you will overwrite um, some of the clock parameters and there's um, you could write your own checks in there but I haven't bothered so what I wanted to show you was um, a demonstration of um, the uh, MCP uh, 7940 and I think that's what we've done so we'll call that a wrap <laughs>